Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Taken from the book of the prophet Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. This is Mukwan Isaac of Radio Maria Uganda Mbali, welcoming you to our program every Monday at 10.20 to 11 a.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. A journey through the Bible where we shall read from the book of Genesis up to the book of Revelation. Tune in and we study the word of God together. This is Radio Maria Uganda Bali, a Christian voice in your home. 101.8 AM. Stay tuned. through the Bible on 101.8 Radio Maria Uganda Mbale, a Christian voice in your home. My name is Mohan Isaac, welcoming you in a very special way to this program where we go through the word of the Lord which nourishes you and myself each and every time we listen to to each and of course we being pilgrims here on earth we need this word the word of the lord to keep sharpening us to keep purifying us to keep strengthening us because we are on our journey to our heavenly homeland we start our program with the word of prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Father, we ask you to begin with us and end with us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are still looking at the covenant at Sinai and of course God's plan for his people, the Israelites. In freeing the children of Abraham from the slavery of Egypt, God made them into a people under the leadership of Moses. And in making the covenant of Sinai with them, God solemnly made his people. Remember, the whole future of Israel, you and myself inclusive, depend and follow this event. For the history of Israel is as we so often call it, the history of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. So, God made a covenant with his people. Remember when you read the book of Leviticus, chapter 22, around verse, I mean, chapter 26, around verse 12. It says, 
I will be your God and you shall be my people. On Sinai, God offered to make a special covenant with the Israelites, that is to unite himself with them by being their God and by making them his nation. When you read Exodus chapter 19 from verse 3 to 6, it tells us that in God's words, what the agreement was that God wanted to make with Israel. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him out of the mount, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bow you on eagles, on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my only possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. It belongs to me, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of God, to the children of Israel. God is part of the covenant was to be Israel's God and to make Israel his people. Of course, as I quoted uh, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 12, the Lord said, I will be your God and you shall be my people. Now, after God is saying all of that, and Moses coming and telling the people of Israel, you realize that God continued and said, And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you shall be my people. Israel, Israel is part of the covenant was to obey God and keep the commands of his covenant, trust and obey. And you know what? Moses gave the message to Israel and the whole people agreed and all the people answered together and said, all of that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That is Exodus chapter 19 from verse 7 to 8. And that is why the church keeps going through this covenant. The church keeps reminding you and myself so that we do not forget the words that the Lord spoke to his people through Moses. And that is why in our journey through the Bible, we keep going through the words of the Lord. And today, we start the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. You think it is something that only happened during the time of Moses? You think it is something that happened only during the the time of the Old Testament or the, the time of during the early church? No, thank you. It happens even up to date. And the Lord is telling us that we shouldn't commit adultery. Yes, Jesus told his followers, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. What a striking statement released by our blessed Lord. Remember the people of Israel, the Jews, the people who were present had their own perceptives. 
they had their own interpretation of the law. And mostly, the Pharisees, they interpreted it with uh, something in their mind about the, they focused so much on righteousness. And this righteousness was the outside righteousness that you look at all people and you say, these people, the way they are doing things, I think they are doing it wrongly. I'm the only person, I believe, who can do this in the most correct way. You've seen such people in the communities. You think one person, you can interpret, you can do things much better than all the, the, the whole community. In the church, you find a believer, for example... Some people who are devoted to some to, to some groups, they say the other people are not doing the things well. Even some Christians, they want to correct their their shepherds. Father, no, I think that priest is not is not uh, gifted, is not charismatic. I think that priest, because he only comes and says mass, what I've seen, he cannot, I think, uh, do deliverance. Are you forgetting that the sacraments he carry out each and every day, the highest, of course, uh, is uh, the one for the body and blood of our blessed Lord. The mass he celebrates on our behalf. Don't you think that is the greatest prayer which involves deliverance and each and everything? But now for you, because you are a charismatic, you start telling people how incompetent, how incompetent the shepherd is in terms of faith. How the other person is incompetent in terms of faith. No one is competent when it comes to the matters of faith. When you read the Catechism of the Catholic Church number 2331 about God's creation, God is love in himself and he lives a mystery of personal loving communion created or creating the human race in his own image imago day all being created in the image of god and of course god inscribed in the humanity of man and woman the vocation and thus the capacity and the responsibility of love and communion. You should remember that God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. And he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, this is a statement which we normally misinterpret, especially when you find people, when you find men, when you find some of our parents who have produced children in more than one lady, they tell you that when you read the Bible, it says, God said, go and multiply, be fruitful and multiply. And in Luganda, they say, mugende, muzale, muale. I don't know whether we we really understand this statement very well, but when God created man, he made him in the likeness of himself, that is of God, male and female, he created them alike and blessed them and named them man when they were created. That is what the Lord did. Now, Catechism still, number 2332, tells us that sexuality affects all aspects of a human person in the unity of his body and soul. 
sexuality here we are talking about um, being male being female it especially concerns effectively the capacity to love and to procreate and in a more general way the aptitude for forming bonds of communion with others when we talk about procreation this simply means to produce giving life to new op- to new offsprings co-creation is to create things co-creation for example if uh, someone planted trees if someone came up with ideas that will make an environment a good place for people to live in that is to co-create but to procreate you are giving life you are giving you, you are bearing children you get a point and so the bond of communion with others that is the general the general intention and so everyone man and woman inclusive should acknowledge and accept his sexual identity if you are a woman be happy and say yes thank you god if you are a man say thank you to god and appreciate your sexual identity not the things of um going for transgender you find people going for transgender it's uh, common in um, in america and maybe other other nations where you find people that are born i am a woman i mean a mother gives birth parents give birth to to a girl but because they wanted so much to have a boy as their first born they do what we call transgender you go and they exchange your sex they make operation some people have died in that process so they operate you they they trans they interchange your organ they remove what the lord blessed you with and they put what they wished you to have you see how we start deviating how we start moving away from the the real the initial plan the lord had for someone just as we read in uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 for i know i had i i i know clearly the plans i have clear plans for you even before you were born i know you i knew you I knew each and everything about you. And Jeremiah also says that before you were born, I knew you, I consecrated you. So the Lord did all of that. You want to say that whatever the Lord did, he didn't have any intention. That is what you want to to, to bring out. And so physical, moral and spiritual difference and complementarity are oriented toward the goods of marriage and the flourishing of family life the harmony of the couple and the society depends in part on the way in which the complementarity the needs and the mutual support between the sexes are lived out And so in creating men male and female God gives man and woman an equal personal dignity Man is a person man and woman equally so Now since both were created in the image and likeness of the personal God It means each of the two sexes is an image 
of the power and tenderness of God with equal dignity though in a different way the union of man and woman in marriage is a way of imitating in the flesh the creator's generosity and fecundity therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife and they become one flesh all of human generations proceed from this union the lord intends before you were born that is what the lord intended and so you find people doing other things you are now born you can now reason you can now decide for yourself you say now i think i can have a man as my spouse you are a man i think for me i am not fit to have a man as my spouse i can have my fellow lady but remember here we are saying that uh, it is a way the two people coming together is a way of imitating in the flesh the creator's generosity and fecundity what does the term fecundity mean remember when we when i was um, handling the fourth commandment if you were with me or maybe you've just joined the term fecundity is the ability to produce an abundance of offspring or a new growth actually it means fertility to multiply mated females which shows increased fertility fecundity the ability to produce many new ideas and of course the the, the immense fecundity of his imagination for example made a profound impact on the state the new ideas giving birth to new offsprings we could say the immense fecundity of uh, his imagination made uganda made an impact a profound impact on uganda's politics the ideas being given when you watch a uh, nbs every thursday from 10 i think from 10 pm that is uh, 22 hours from 10 pm there is a program called the barometer bbs it brings uh, to us that program i think also at night every every thursday i think from 8 pm now in this program the barometer there are people they bring a number of um, political analysts member of members of parliament inclusive and other people who are not um, who are not uh, politicians but they have the fecundity they have the ideas about the nation and the criticisms they make the criticisms they bring out they have helped the country to develop at times they hit the president without fear at times they hit the the, the the members of opposition without fear but they have a point they are bringing out live about that talk about the members of opposition in each and every country once they hit the the ruling government point blank they tell the the ruling government the do's i mean the do's and the don'ts the things they are supposed to do and the things they are not supposed to do and if they are doing them they help the country to be in a good place giving those new ideas but now here we are talking about giving birth to new offsprings 
when you read the catechism of the Catholic Church number 2336, it tells us that Jesus came to restore creation to the purity of its origin. He came to bring back things to their original and in the Sermon on the Mountain, Jesus interprets God's plan strictly. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Remember, it is not the brain. At times we say, the things are coming from my brain. I think my head, no thank you. You first love something. And once you love something, the heart will send signals to the brain. And the brain will interpret it basing on what the heart has sent. You see, we have a group of nerves. The group of nerves, these nerves, they, they do play a very vital role. The conditions we go through, they are not originating from the brain. Some of them are originating from what the heart sends, the message the heart sends to the brain. For example, I, I remember very well when I was in um, secondary, that was senior three, there is a topic we did, I think it was um, locomotion. Now, we went ahead and we looked at uh, sensory things to do with the nerves, sensory nerves, that is biology. We looked at um, a number of uh, muscles, what happens when a person is angry, what happens when a person is annoyed, when a person is happy, what happens when a person is about to be attacked maybe by robbers you are moving on the way and you get frightened at times people you find someone and say mm, the hairs on my head have stood still your hair on the head as if it stands you see a person gets once a person gets frightened what happens you step on a sharp object or a hot Chaco, all of those experiments are there. There are those, there are those groups of of uh, cells, the nerves. They will take the message to the brain. The brain will also create, send, tell the responsible nerves to create a response to behave. They will run very fast there and then tell that part of the body that you know what there is danger. Take off. And the person will withdraw the leg immediately. It is not your own, it's not your own will. That now for me, I will that uh, once this happens, I'm supposed to respond like this. No, thank you. The greatest scientist, that is God, willed it. And that is how he created us. Yes, that is how God willed and created us. You are on the way, you are moving, and a snake, you see, bites you. The leg, eventually, immediately, you are going to withdraw your leg from that place. It's because of what the Lord did in us. The tradition of the church has understood the sixth commandment so well as encompassing the whole of human sexuality the church is very clear when it comes to some of these things people ask why does the church do some of the things they don't understand especially 
when it comes to when we are doing um, the wedding people are going to mention a number of words before the wedding is done they tell a man that do this a woman you are also going to do this mention these words we listen to readings talking about what god has put together no man should separate all of those things we hear them the church remember follows not only the bible some people ask where is this coming from remember the church is strong the church still exists because it considers what we call the magisterium what does the church teach where is that teaching of the church and if you are careful when i am doing uh, this program the journey through the bible in order not to go astray in order not to deviate from what i am doing i make sure beside me beside me is the teaching of the church the catechism of the catholic church that i have just started handling the sixth commandment what does the bible say about it okay what about the catechism of the catholic church what does the church say about this commandment yes it is not about reading the the scripture the word of the lord you, you interpret it the way you feel like the way you think the bible says go into all the, go to go to the earth and be fruitful and multiply and for you you say since the bible has said go be fruitful and multiply you think it's about giving birth and leaving them there you think it's about producing in every woman you find and leaving there no thank you the church also is strong still exists because of the tradition when we talk about the tradition i i'll just simply tell you that um before before the bible was written the church was existing the church existed before the bible was written like our blessed lord told the the, the jews that before abraham i am before the bible the catholic church is you see it existed she existed before now the bible is of course um, a yardstick acts as a tool which guides us but the church wrote this bible brought it into the form in which it exists and now when other people come they come and they want to burn the bible the catholic church put down combined the catholic fathers sat and decided which book fits to be in which place but the people this other sect that came yesterday the mushrooming sect they are saying the catholic church in its setting is wrong no thank you let us go in for a short musical break a journey through the bible returns shortly and we will continue drawing lessons going through the word of the lord stay tuned
I want to welcome you from that short musical break. In case you've just tuned in, it is 101.8 Radio Maria Uganda Mbale Christian Voice in your home Juan Isaac with a journey through the Bible. Before we went in for that short musical break, we had started looking at the sixth commandment. We now look at the vocation to chastity. When we say you shall not commit adultery, it is beyond the mere saying, the mere thinking, you shall not commit adultery. When we say chastity, I think chastity is a state or a practice of refraining, abstaining, from extra material or especially from oral sexual intercourse vows of chastity when we say when we talk about chastity at times people only think about um people only think about uh to do with uh, marriage, that not getting married. It is beyond that. Okay, let us see what the Catechism tells us about chastity. When you read the Catechism of the Catholic Church number 2337, yes, 37, chastity means the successful integration of sexuality within the person and thus the inner unity of man in his bodily and spiritual being. Sexuality in which man is belonging to the bodily and biological world is expressed becomes personal and truly human when it is integrated into the relationship of one person to another. And so in the complete and lifelong mutual gift of a man and a woman, the virtue of chastity therefore involves the integrity of the person and integrality of the gift. When we talk about the integrity of the person, it means or it could be the chaste person maintaining the integrity of the powers of life and love placed in him. The integrity ensures the unity of the person. It is opposed to any behavior that would impair it. And of course, it uh, it tolerates neither it it tolerates neither a double life nor duplicity in speech. What does this mean? You devote yourself. You say for me, I will be a priest. For me. At the same time, I will be a parent. Hey, it doesn't work like that. There's no double dealing here. You are not going to deal with both. It does not tolerate with a, a mixture. You don't mix things once. You have your boy, your child say, uh, once your child says, Mommy, Daddy, I want to be a priest. Make sure you explain to them. Let them understand what it means to be a just person. Tell them that chastity includes an apprenticeship in self-mastery, which is a training in human freedom 
apprenticeship is simply means a position as an apprentice an arrangement in which someone learns an art or it could be trade job and another it means a person attaining an on job training for example where they say learn on job so it combines on the job training with the related classroom instruction all under the supervision of a general level professional i i believe you've ever seen what we call the people we call seminarians the younger boys who are undergoing the the training first of all they go to the synagogues i mean they go to the seminaries where they are trained they study what is supposed to be studied in class yes they do biology they do chemistry they do physics they do cra they do other subjects history they do literature they do latin but they have professional persons they have spiritual leaders they have priests who are already experienced who already went through the training who are already practicing what they studied now they are the ones to train them apprenticeship it involves undergoing that training you are going to know what happens more about priesthood after accepting and going where they train them from it is not about waking up one day and you say for me i don't support what the catholic church does i am also a just person i can also live a just a just life without going to seminary and being trained you are deceiving yourself just like we've had people claim that for me i am god i came from heaven no not god i am jesus that for me i am jesus i came from heaven god sent me so i am not supposed to be counted we had all of those things when it comes to i mean when it came to censors people said for me i am jesus i am the savior i am not supposed to associate with you people you see i am not supposed to associate with the sinners and yet when christ came he associated with all of mankind so you are not going to say that when it comes to this part chastity you are to go and be trained and so for you to live a happy life man's dignity requires him to act out of conscience and free choice no force here as moved and drawn in a personal way from within and not by blind impulses in himself or by mere external constraint man gains such dignity when riding himself of all slavery to the passions he presses forward to his goal by freely choosing what is good and by his diligence and skill effectively secures for himself the means suited to this end recently we had uh, we were cracking jokes we were cracking jokes as the youth on our platform and one member said for me when i give birth and god blesses me with a bouncing baby boy 
he must become a priest of course it was uh, it was a joke but you see in cracking jokes at times there are members who may not interpret it rightly and say this member is or was cracking a joke now you may make another person interpret it in a way or say i think she's right i think he's right even me mine must become a priest i give birth to mine must become a doctor mine must become a lawyer mine must become a teacher wait a minute on seeing that message i also cracked a joke by quoting catechism of the catholic church the teaching of the catholic church on duties of parents especially when it comes to the fourth commandment no parent is supposed to indulge no parent is supposed to impose no parent is supposed to dictate what their children should become if you are a doctor yes if you are a priest let the children of your brother be inspired by your life and say I want to become a priest. I want to be like Uncle Mommy. I want to be like Aunt Dora who is a nun. Let them be inspired. And once you realize there is that someone is becoming I mean is starting to admire you, draw them closer to you. Bring them, let them start staying with you such that they are not corrupted by the world and in that they will become priests you've ever thought of they will become religious nuns you've ever thought of you will have we will produce doctors in this country who are not only competent but who are a professional and respect the professional ethics of what they have become you are not going to force them but once you say they must become of course i came in and uh, i also cracked my joke in that way so here we are saying that it should come from within them choosing what is good for themselves their parents who say for me my child must become this and once they take them to school and they fail to perform well they have made them repeat classes more than three times and remember it is worse with a girl child remember the way god created these creatures these ladies they are prone to there are some things naturally a lady a girl is one person who does things carefully in order not to be to to be ashamed they do things with a lot of care just see the way they walk see the way they talk they are not people who normally eat in public just like for us many do at campus or at high school even in primary actually it start from primary a girl will buy her bite during breakfast time and a sit down before consuming it will buy whatever they have bought for eating and sit in their company and eat but for us i'm hungry it's time for lunch breakfast i go to canteen i buy whatever i've bought i've bought mandas i've bought a soda by the time i reach to that place where maybe my my peers are seated it is done it is complete i've finished it you see i come back eating it i'm giving this as an example of course not all men do that 
uh, personal I don't do that but I'm just giving it as an example when you are defining a boy child there are those things that define us and when I'm defining them it is us all of us myself inclusive though situations keep shaping us we keep we are being shaped each and every day one it depends on the community you are also living in. The community we live in keeps shaping us. The people we associate with keep shaping us. If you are living with a principal person, I'm staying with the priests who know this code, the, 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 the codes of uh, a number of things, the table conduct, the table code, what happens when you are doing this i will keep copying from them i will not be like those like other people but this the knowledge i've attained will not change what happens in other societies in other communities no now that this lady do things in a way that is uh different from um from others every time i mean from different from from gents every time you force them to to do things that they are not do that that are not rhyming in their capacity at the end of it all they end up doing what you did not expect you take back a child your a girl child you tell them you must repeat this class it is worse with a level you must repeat i want you to score this number of points 15 above the first time gets 10 another time repeats you never know if the child if examinations come back in her favor yes they have always scored highly but if things don't go well they may even score less than 10 so naturally that is what happens so you need to be careful not to force things on your child there are parents who have said it must be like this it has ended up in tears please parents let us help our children to become what they have desired and once they become what they have decided they are going to be competent professionals they will not ashamed you neither will they ashamed the community whoever wants to remain faithful to his baptismal promises and resist temptations will want to adopt the means for doing so self knowledge practice of uh, any essays adopted of course to the situation that confront him obedience to god's commandments exercises exercises of moral virtues and fidelity to prayer indeed it is through chastity that we are gathered together and led back to the unity from which we were fragmented into multiplicity the virtue of chastity comes under the cardinal virtue of temperance which seeks to permeate the passions and appetites of the senses within uh, within us or with reason and so self mastery is a long and exacting work one who can never consider it acquired once and for all it presupposes renewed effort and all stages of life the effort required can be more intense in certain periods such as when uh, the personality is being formed for instance during childhood and adolescence so 
chastity has laws of growth which progress through stages marked by imperfection and too often by sin. Yes, don't think that uh, as a person who is falling and all the time the life is marked by imperfection cannot become just no. That is how th those are the stages it chastity the process of chastity is marked by imperfection and sin yes all of that you must ex uh, ex accept i mean expect them man day by day builds himself up through his many free decisions and so he knows loves and accomplishes moral good by stages of growth. And so, chastity represents an eminently personal task. It also involves a cultural effort, for there is an in interdependence between personal betterment and the improvement of society. Chastity presupposes respect for the rights of the person, in particular the right, in particular the right to receive information and education that respect the moral and spiritual dimensions of human life. Chastity is a moral virtue. It is also a gift from God, a grace, a fruit of a spiritual effort. The Holy Spirit enables one whom the water of baptism has regenerated to imitate the purity of Christ. I also spoke about integrality of the gift of self now i think i can summarize with this when you read the catechism of the catholic church number 2346 it tells us that chastity is the form of all the virtues under its influence chastity appears as a school of the gift of the person self mastery is ordered to the gift of self just it leads him who practices it to become a witness to his neighbor of God's fidelity in loving kindness. So the virtue of chastity blossoms in friendship. It shows the disciple how to follow and imitate him who has chosen us as his friends that is Christ who has given himself totally to us and allows us to participate in his divine estate chastity is a promise of immortality chastity i repeat is a promise of immortality and finally chastity is expressed notably in friendship with one's neighbor whether it develops between persons of the same or opposite sex, friendship represents a great good for all, and it leads to spiritual communion. There are various forms of chastity, maybe if time allows, in our next program, I may go through them briefly. But for today, that is where our program ends. I want to thank you for loving Radio Maria, for keeping it 101.8, a Christian voice in your home. It has been a journey through the Bible with Mkwana Isaac, and today's episode was the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.